Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen review where I compare this new Jinhao X350 with the also new Jinhao X850. What's the difference between them? Let's find out right now. So let's get down to it. What's the difference between the Jinhao X350 and the Jinhao X850? I've already reviewed the X850, uh, which you can see by clicking right up here. I'm gonna show the parts and features of this pen, some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And then I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. But let's quickly look at some of the differences. When I first saw this new model X350, I couldn't tell from the photos if the nib was a number five size or a number six. If it was a number five, I was going to pass on it. But the vendor confirmed that it was indeed a number six, so I ordered it. So here are the X350 and the X450 side by each. They look pretty much identical to each other. They're both black enamel paint over brass with gold metal hardware. The X350 is slightly smaller, capped, and six grams lighter than the 850. They both post well and the X50 ends up slightly longer than the X850, but the section of the X350 is longer and doesn't have those awful divots on the grip to remind you where to put your fingers. They both take the same size nib and feed, the X50 here having the bent nib, and the unscrewable nib collars are identical, meaning you can swap the nibs between these two models easily. And the X350 here is slightly slimmer than the X850. So let's look at the parts and features of the X350. Overall, it is a cigar-shaped enamel over brass cartridge converter pen. From the top, we see the cigar-shaped top finial and the gold metal clip ring that separates it from the cap. The clip is an elegant rectangular shape and is identical to the clip on the X850. The clip ring holding it in place is slightly thicker on the X850. The cap tapers up to a single gold metal band that has Jinhao engraved on the front and the model number X350 on the back. The cap tapers down to the barrel, which tapers one millimeter over its length to another gold metal ring that separates the bullet-shaped end finial from the barrel. The cap unscrews with one and about three quarters turns to reveal the black plastic over brass section and the number six size Jinhao Fude nib and black plastic feed. As I said earlier, the nib and feed are part of a nib collar unit that unscrews for replacement or cleaning. The section has a flared gold metal ring at the top. Let's take a closer look at this nib. It is a stock old style Jinhao nib with the scroll work, the Jinhao chariot, Jinhao, and the disingenuous 18 kgp which is supposed to make you believe that there's real gold anywhere on this pen at all the only difference from the stock nib is that the end is bent at about a 30 degree angle the section unscrews to reveal the included jinhao branded standard international converter and the top of the nozzle has a silicone o-ring to keep that barrel from coming unscrewed as you use it. The pen will also take two standard short cartridges, one in the section and one in the barrel. The inside of the cap has a plastic cap liner that seals the nib. And although the cap threads are plastic and the barrel cap threads are metal, there's none of the cross threading issues that were a bugaboo with the Jinhao 159. The cap posts deeply and securely and does back weight the pen slightly, offsetting the balance in the hand. The pen is plenty long enough to write with it unposted. The X350 is noticeably slimmer than the X850 in the hand, and this section is a big improvement over the divots on the 850. I bought this pen from Sally's Easy Buy shop on Etsy for $14.80 US. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Jinhao X350 with a Jinhao X850, a Jinhao X450, a Jinhao X159, and a Moonman P136 piston filler. 
Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. The X450 is a snap cap and doesn't post very well or securely at all. And neither does the Moonman P136. Some people tell me that theirs actually post better than this, but this just falls right off for me. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. You see the section, in my opinion, of the X850 is a big improvement over the X450, which had deeper divots and a tapering profile. And the X350, I think, is an improvement over the X850 because it does away with those divots. They're all relatively good size in the hand, unposted. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, as always. And this is the Jinhao X350. And it has a number six size steel Fude nib. Let's check the wetness. It's decently wet. It's much like a paintbrush here. Very, very thick line. But again, very smooth. As you might expect with that flat bottom of that nib on the paper. And this is a lot of fun, this nib. Specialty nib as you'd expect. And the ink I'm using today was sent to me by Kong Soon Tae of South Korea. Uh, my apologies, Kong, if I'm mispronouncing your name. Uh, Kong is making inks and sent me these two sample bottles of ink that he's made, one in bright pink and one in clear blue. The ink is called, and I'm gonna have to spell this out because I can't pronounce it, J-I-N-C-H, E O N G H O Jing Chao Ho Jing Chao Ho Jing Chao. I'm not even gonna try it, folks. Do do kaka poo poo. Pee pee. I'll put a couple of links in the description to where you can find this ink for sale, and the box has Korean writing on the front and. German on one side and ah, English on the back and Korean on this side. It says Bright World Clear Color Fountain Pen Ink, uh, 30 milliliters I think this is, one fluid ounce, and address and phone number and things like that of uh, Kong's shop in Korea. Thank you Kong for sending me this ink. This blue is a nice bright blue similar to Hiroshizuku Asagao in color but not nearly as wet. It's actually a fairly dry uh, ink. And here is the ink on Tomoe River paper. And you can see that when it's very wet, it has a bit of a red sheen to it as well. I don't know whether you can see that or not. And there's the bright pink. It's almost a magenta uh, light pink right, in the red. And as to line variation, well, that's the point of this nib. It gives you line variation in many, many different ways. Uh, let's explore the variety here. As you angle your pen from different angles, let's move up. As you angle your pen from different angles, you get some fairly thin lines at a high angle. And then as you tilt your pen down, it gets thicker, especially in the horizontal. So there's horizontal moving down it gets thicker moving down to a regular pen angle and then down to almost 30 degrees you get a very very thick line indeed almost becomes a paintbrush at this point so the range this nib gets is from a very high angle of about 0 0.2 millimeters at the thinnest to the horizontal stroke which is about 
1.5 millimeters so like a wide stub and that range is a western triple x fine to well a 1.5 stub and japanese would be extra fine to off the charts again 1.5 and you also get line variation in reverse because you can reverse right with this nib and it keeps up and it's a little bit more feedback it's not scratchy so this would be an excellent nib for those of you that sketch so you're going to get this very very thick paintbrush kind of an effect and for cross hatching and sketching you can turn it over or you can move your nib up to get the thinner lines very very versatile nib but for cursive writing it's a bit finicky i find it skips a bit with certain letters uh, e's and d's and things like that when you're doing a uh, downwards to the left stroke so writing with the nib is inconsistent your pen angle is very important and i find that it skips on certain letters and for our quote as you can see while i was doing that quote I was getting some skipping on a number of my letters. I didn't even get that F in there. So this isn't a nib that I would use for everyday writing. This is very much a specialty nib. But the cool thing is this is easily swappable with one of those standard Jinhao number six size nibs. I've got a few of those, so I could drop that in in a couple of seconds very, very easily. If you don't have the nib unit to swap, just pull this nib and feed out. It, it's friction fit and comes out very easily and pop the new one in and for some quick writing it is very very wet and that feed keeps up very very nicely so what do i like and what do i not like so much about this fountain pen in comparison to the x850 I like the X350 better, regardless of the nib. The nib is a specialty nib, and you can get regular nibs for this pen. So apples to apples with both pens using the same nib, I like the X350 better. It's lighter, and the section doesn't have those awful divots, which I dislike. For the price, this is a well-made, comfortable, in-the-hand fountain pen that is nicely styled. It would not be out of place in any business setting. And it isn't that much smaller than the X850, or the X450. I must say I was surprised that I would like this pen better than the X850. I was thinking that the X350 was an upgrade from the old X750, but this is a completely different pen as much as the X850 is a completely different pen than the X450. I must say the numbering system of these models of old pens from China has always tended to give me a headache until I finally realized that, well, I just don't give a damn. Frankly, my dear, I don't oh. get... And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store. And when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis badges and sneak peek unboxing videos as well and that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching and that's all she wrote i made this